Hello, this is Ramsgate's Westcliff, where I live. This is my balcony of my flat, and I'm going to take you on the second of my Ramsgate walks, and we're going to go along the Westcliff where I live, look at a lot of the interesting things, and maybe a few surprises. So come on, let's get started. Before we go, this is the view from my flat. Over there is Deal Pier, that's France, Belgium over there, and that of course is Ramsgate Royal Harbour, and the Churchill pub on the corner there of the Paragon. So let's get started, eh? The light on. This was built in 1820-ish. Um, it was called Regency Crescent, and it was a row of houses, very grand houses, because um, in those days, Ramsgate had just been a military port and town and, a, and the army was here, the Napoleonic Wars, so there's a lot of money splashed around. So one of the things they did was they built this house which was turned into a hotel in the 1850s and in the 1950s became a language school and then recently, I think 2008, was turned into various houses and flats and things. And my flat is one of 43. So, this is St. Augustine's Road. Down there is the church and Pugin's house. The church that Pugin built next to his house. Across the road is the monastery. We'll be going to that later. And then down here, we're going to go to um, Spencer Square and Royal Road. So, just across the road. So that was a lot easier than normal. It's a hard road to cross. There's no pedestrian crossing. between here and um, the harbour in that direction and Grange Road in that direction. So it's quite a long way, half a mile or more maybe. So we're coming into, that's Spencer Square there and Royal Road leads off to the left. And this is a very historic square and there's tennis courts in the middle there. There's some nice architecture, as you can see, and chimneys. That was turned into council flats in the 1960s or 70s, I think. Spencer Square was built around the same time. It's like an affluent area. And a former member of Blur now lives there. And a long time ago, a man called Vincent van Gogh lived there. This is Royal Road, which forms the western end of Spencer Square. And as you can see, Vincent van Gogh, there you go, taught here when it was a school. Same as saying he didn't teach painting, he taught, I, I thought he was mathematics or something like that, but it certainly it wasn't painting, but he did do drawings. In fact, there's a very famous drawing looking out. There you go, Spencer Square. So let's go down a bit, have a look at the house where he actually lived all those years ago. And then we'll head off to Addington Street, which has become a very arty um, shopping street recently. <coughs> <coughs> Nasty golf you got there, Jim? Yes, it is, isn't it? Never mind, hope it won't prove fatal. Probably not. Well, we hope not, don't we? So here we are, Spencer Square tennis courts. It's Friday afternoon, about half one. There's no one playing at the moment. Here we are. These houses, they go back a long way. And they're quite tall, as you can see there. Three storeys, some of them are four storeys, because they have a basement, which is where the servants used to cook the food and things back in the old day. And what have we here? Alright, so there you go, that's Vincent van Gogh, where he used to live. So he was richer than he appeared. No, he wasn't, because he wasn't really a that posh then, or perhaps he was a lodger in a house here. But I don't think a part-time um, teacher would have been earning lots. In fact, when he left here, he had to walk to London to go to his next job. So, there you go. So, it's quite a long way. I think 80 miles, I think he had to walk, or 90. 
because he had to go to Wesselton, I think, Brentford, I think he was. Might be totally wrong, but that's what I understand. So here we go, down to the Paragon. Very nice. These are the backs of those houses we just looked at in Spencer Square. That's, um, I think those are quite modern, isn't it? But that's quite an old one there. I think a lot of these have been turned into flats in their own right. But you see, that one there is still the. See? So, Ramsgate, a lot's happening here. There's a lot of old buildings. This bit here goes right the way back to the 1820s. As you can see, these I think were probably servants or maybe coach houses. You see, very nice. This is the back entrance to the Paragon. There, very nice houses. And here we are, just coming into Addington Street. This has been here for quite a long time, because uh, before the 1820s. Because um, further down there, there's a pub which is now a hotel called the Falstaff, and that's where Wellington used to drink and plan his campaigns in the Napoleonic Wars. So now this street's turned into more of a... Well, when I moved here to Ramsgate six years ago, this was a bit of a down at heel part of town. You could buy flats here or get a shop here for very cheap. Now there's been a resurgence, a lot of antique shops, a lot of people who are... Whoops, a bit... Um, look at that. Um, a lot of people who are like artisans who do... Um, who make things, who upholster lots of seagulls. But as you can see, very nice. There's plants there. And this is the Queen Charlotte pub, which has been there for quite a long time. That's nice, isn't it? That's, a concert, that, that's an accordion. Some very good things in these shops here. Yeah. I don't think these are to sell, though. I think these are more for her uh, boots, more for display. That's a local picture. And then these are obviously local, but they are very good, aren't they? Yes. That's a 3D, made out of plaster, I think.
This is Vale Square, which is another one of the posh squares in Ramsgate. As you can see, it's a mixture of various types of houses. There's these, which I think are very nice, and then there's a private garden in the middle of the square, which is for use of all the residents. And they have fates and things there. As you can see, the standard of cars on this road is a lot nicer than elsewhere. <laughs> and here's a big surprise. In the middle of Ramsgate, Vale Square, you suddenly come across a thatched cottage that wouldn't look a miss on Midsummer Murders or something like that in the Cotswolds. And this is just... This is the only one I've noticed around here, but um, there it is by itself. If you like this, why don't you subscribe to my channel? Why don't you like this video? If you don't like it, then don't. You don't have to like it. If you do subscribe, please press the notification bell, so then you will get all your notification. Do you want to press that subscribe button notification bell now? Okay, please do, or if not, do not fret and we will carry on regardless. That's the British way. Carry on regardless. So let's carry on regardless. <laughs> so if you come down to the other end of Addington Street you end up here which is basically the Paragon by the port by the harbour and uh, that's Nelson Crescent there which is, goes back again to these Regency days. And as you can see the whole area which this was all barracks and military housing and things and um, inns and that kind of thing. And um, down here, there's a thing called Jacob's Ladder, which is a series of steps leading down to the harbour. And when it was first built, it was made out of wood. And then I think in the middle of the 19th century, it was changed into a stone staircase, which is a lot more durable especially with the storms and the and the sea air and the salt and all that so if we walk down we're not going to go all the way down because we then have to come all the way back but we'll go most of the way because we want to look at the sailors church which is down at the end of it and there it is there And that's the harbour down there, that's the end of the harbour. This is the more commercial end of the harbour, where they do the boat building and all sorts of things there. And um, let's go back up and see what is happening up here. And back to Spencer's Square again. And again, the Ramsgate's um, fascination with getting things done and scaffolding. As you can see, I think every one of these buildings has had scaffolding up since I've been here. Now, interestingly, these coal holes here are Jeremy Corbyn, the former Labour leader's um, pastime, is to do brass rubbings of these. He was in Ramsgate about five years ago and I'm not sure whether, whether he actually did any rubbings then. But um, the basic, when these were like posh houses, this would go straight down to the coal cellar and the coal merchant would just do the whole street in one go and then he'd obviously send them an invoice afterwards. So that's why you find this in these old houses on the street, you see, it's a very Victorian thing. Now I'm shooting this in 4K, which takes up a lot of um, memory, also takes up a lot of battery, so I might have to change the batteries and memory cards before the day's out, or before the walk's out. So, let's see. But everybody apparently likes to see it in 4K, so who am I to... Um, argue with that.
You can see that's the Regency where I live. My door there. Some of those flats are quite posh. Mine isn't particularly posh, even though I've got a, ba a balcony facing the English Channel. But, um, well, I may talk about my flat later. But at the moment, now all this here was Ramsgate Hospital. And these were houses of doctors and things that worked there. And, uh, but that all behind there was Ramsgate Hospital, which was uh, sold off in, I think, the 1960s. And it's now all, all housing. So, now, as you can see, that there is a famous building. I'm not sure, I think it's called Westcliff Lodge. I will try and put some information about it up, because I don't know that much, but I believe a famous artist lives there. Now, I've never seen anybody go in or out, and the gates are normally locked. Oh, well, at least closed. But apparently he's a famous artist, and I don't know who it is. But there are lots of famous people who do live in Ramsgate. Apart from me, there's um, Adrian Sherwood, there's um, the guy of Blur. There's lots more people. There's um, Linda Lewis, who you may know from the 1960s, had a few hits. She's she lives in Ramsgate. And more people as well, obviously. This here is the monastery, St. Augustine's Monastery. Now it's now a retreat run by monks from Kerala and the entrance is up this lane here and I'm going to try and walk up here to see if I can take a shot. Now if I probably get um, told to go and I think the gate's locked but um, hopefully we can get a few shots, a few shots of the Monastery of Saints. Now we're going to a weekend retreat. Here we are. So let's see what we can see. That's obviously the car park and here's the monastery itself. It's about as far as I've actually got. So anyway, this is about as far as we are going to get. I think the gate's open but I don't really want to go through because it's actually closed. Absolutely. <laughs> but it is not locked. So one day later, perhaps I'll ask them whether it's okay and maybe do a whole thing about it. Who knows, would, would you like that? If you do, please comment down below. Let me know if that would be something you'd be interested in. And also, while we're on this, if you like this, like it. If you don't like it, just don't do a thing. In fact, I'm surprised you're still watching it, if you don't like it. Right, so, across the road there, we can see the St. Augustine's Church which was, which is a um, Catholic church, which was built by Augustus Pugin in the middle of the 19th century. And um, it's, um, it's now the shrine of St. Augustine. I believe it's got part of his finger there or something like that. And they have, um, it's, a, it's a very old school type of Catholic church. They have, um, incense and all sorts of things so I will one day go to one of those but I've not been yet but I always mean to go because I can hear them ringing the bell on a Sunday morning about 10 past 8 but I've not been yet but who knows I might and they've got a visitor centre there and that's where Augustus Pugin is actually buried so this is the um, this is the main entrance to the Divine Retreat Centre at the Abbey. Uh, they're not allowed to have pe people in there, but it used to be, I think it used to be a little chapel that people could go into and, you know, um, meditate or whatever. You can see the um, very nice metal thing that can look, look out and see who's there, and there's a post box for when the postman comes. There used to be a post box here, actually, in the wall here, but about two or three years ago, somebody crashed into the wall here and it all fell down. So I don't think they bothered to put the, um, put the post box back. Right, so that over there is known as Pugin's Grange. That was the house that Augustus Pugin built for himself. And it's, um, they have open days now. The visitors there, we just missed one, but it's totally booked up. I wanted to climb in. 
so loud on the other. That's Pugin's house, which was built, it was the first house to be built in the modern manner, which I will explain more in the notes. Oh, I'm not really an architect or an architectural student, but I do like things like this, and it's a very nice place to go. So, and also you, you'll notice here that this wall here is made out of uh, flint. This is the bit that was rebuilt. But here's the old wall, you see, that's made out of flint. This is the flint wall, and it's, uh, this I think will go back to the 1850s, this little wall. And that, as I say, is um, Pugin's house. And I'll try and get some pictures of that so I can put it into the video. Now, we go up, up a bit further, and I'll try and cross the road here. If you can to take your life into your hands. This area here is called Screaming Alley. This one's down to the West Cliff Tomanar. This is St Augustine's Road, and that's the Grange Road, round about where the co-op is, where I sometimes go and get my cheese and things like that. So this was called Screaming Alley. Now, it, the reason why it was called Screaming Alley, and that obviously is uh, Pugin's Grange behind here, was, it's got many reasons for it, but it was probably because the area over here, which we'll look at later, is called Government Acre, and this is where the soldiers used to be barracked before they went over to the Napoleonic War from the port in Ramsgate. And apparently this is where they used to take um, young women, and it was their screams that gave this area Screaming Alley, that name. But there are various more people say that it's because a wa wagon lost control running down here, horse and cart, and, and ended up like um, crashing down to the promenade down below, or what's called the military road, and the screaming was the screaming of the horses, it was to die in and stuff like that. But I think that it's more likely to be the Napoleonic horse, frankly. So this is um, Screaming Ali, it takes us down to, past the Lookout Cafe, down to the Westcliff Promenade. This thing says um, more angles on um, Pugin's house and his garden, which is also a very nice garden actually. I have been in there. This is the area known as G Government Acre, which is where they used to put the soldiers used to be camped out. So if we're walking down here, I'll turn the camera around so you can look at the beautiful English Channel. That's um, Sandwich Bay or Pegwell Bay here coming Sandwich Bay. This is the Lookout Cafe. And let's go and have a look down at the port of Ramsgate, which was at one time where the ferries went across to Ostend and um, various places on the, the continent, but not for quite a long time now. I think it's about eight years. And here we are, if you want to pay, I don't know, it used to be 2p, wasn't it? This, I think it's a bit more than that now. 50p. If you want to take a Look out there, 50p. That's the artificial beach which was made when they made the port. This port here is reclaimed land, and um, that was where the ferry used to um, used to go in, and all the duty-free shops and the um, customs, all that was there. And then the ferry used to dock behind that. And you can see there's a pilot boat just coming in to the harbour. This now is a sand blasting site or something. It's been let to, to a firm called Brett. So, uh, as you can see, it's not the not the nicest nicest area in the world. And the, anyway, this is the artificial beach, as I mentioned, which was made when they um, reclaimed the land here for the for the port. And that's a quite a local thing that not many people know about, apart from people that live around here. And that's nice, isn't it? Around about there. See, this is where the cars used to come in for the ferry. Used to have a special um, tunnel, which meant they didn't have to drive through the town. So they come down here, around the roundabout, and to the port. And off they go to um, France or Belgium or wherever they're off to. So you can see on this side, you can see the back of all these places that we're talking about, like Pugin's Grange and the church and 
West, what's it, Westcliff House, and then we will walk past and, and have a look at my building from its nicest angle, which is from the front. And you can even see my balcony. I think I did a picture in the last one, but we can actually see it live on 4K. It's the one that would be exciting. And off we go then, let's have a little walk up to the Westcliff Prom and see if there's anything exciting happening, which I doubt. But we're doing another. This is this used to be the lift. It is still a lift, obviously, but it's not working. It hasn't been for quite a long time. And there you go, and then you can get down there to the beach and all sorts of things. So there you go, that's Gummer Acre, and you can walk up there, that's to Pegwell Nature Reserve. I don't think we'll go that far. So we're going to walk down here and we'll have a look at Westcliff Hall, which again is derelict and falling down. But we'll have a look at that when we pass my flat and the building that it is contained in. Speaking while I'm walking with people watching me and hearing me, I found that quite, um, what's the word looking for? Nerve-wracking, I suppose, is a word for it. But that's one of the reasons why I do these, because I wanted to try and get rid of my shyness and my, my, my stutter. And it seems to be working slightly, because I did, did a radio interview, which I don't think was particularly good, but the guy thought it was OK, or at least so he said. <laughs> but it's something I would never have been able to do like a year ago. So I think that just doing this is helpful whether you like it and then of course I have to inflict it on you which is a bit cruel but that's the way it goes isn't it that's the whole building where I live my bit is the bit with the in the middle and I'll show you when we get to the gate my my flat or my balcony you can't really see what's the flat but you see the balcony which we started this walk on now, of course, these sort of walks are something I've only just started to do. So I've no idea, literally no idea, how to hold the camera, how to speak, how to do things, how to point at things, how to make them interesting. So we're all learning at the same time. So here we are, let's have a look at where I live. Can you spot my flat, my balcony? Well, it's the one, here's a hint. It's the one that's um, the, got the most plants and the most bits of... Um, actually, I'm not even pointing at me, am I? See, I was thinking as I was then, I was pointing over my shoulder. Sorry about that. So, my flat is the one, as you can probably see, with the, with the door on, because I always leave my door on. Actually, no, I don't. I'm just saying that, because it's quite a nice day, and I'm just walking around my block, but normally I do close it. But I've got the door open, I've got the... Can you see it? I've got a ladder and various plants and things and wooden stuff and my curry leaf plant is on there. The bit down the end there is, that's a private, that's two private houses which are sold for about a million pound each because they are very big, they're like four storeys and I think they have, have cellars and things. And then next to it is actually, that with the scaffolding up is old council things. Some of them have been bought, but they're having to re re renovate the whole block and put the, a new roof on and things. It's costing millions. So all the people who have bought these cheap council flats are now having to pay, well, they've been asked to pay hundreds of thousands of pounds towards the re renovation. So perhaps they weren't bargains after all. And then this bit from, you can see the, the raised bit to, that bit there is privately owned. It's my landlord who owns most of them. There's about 40, 40 flats in there. And then you have a bit which has just been recently reopened because it was like a language school, the last part of the language school. And then the bit on the end are all, again, a council flats bought by the council. I've never been inside those, but, but I believe they're not as nice as the ones that we're in. So there you go, so that's what it is. 
And then over there, you can see that's the Paragon. That's Churchill's Pub, which again was a tea shop. I think that's only been recently built, say, about, well, say recently for Ramsgate, about 1904, I think it was. Before then, it was a bath, a bathhouse. In fact, oddly enough, the basement of the hotel, when this was a hotel between 1850 and about 1950, the whole of the basement was actually the swimming pool. So don't quote me on this, but I believe that's why the people living in the downstairs flats are prone to damp because obviously, well, obviously I say I'm not an architect or surveyor so I don't know but to me it does seem obvious that if you're living in what used to be a swimming pool you can expect a bit of damp but of course I don't know so I'm not trying to cast aspersions or anything so why don't I just shut up Right, so this bit here we saw cordoned off is because underneath us we're standing on what used to be West Cliff Hall. This was built at the tail end of the Victorian era as a grand concert hall and then as external gardens and it was all part of the same thing and they'd have an orchestra playing in the gardens or in the views raining in these halls. And in fact the Rolling Stones, I think 1964, played in West Cliff Hall which is directly below us and partly below the road here. So it's quite big. It was owned by Thanet District Council, who aren't best known for being very good, I have to say that. And so there was a thing started called Project Motorhome, like a, a registered uh, charity Kickstarter thing, which tried to buy it and then make it into like an art centre arts for the community. But before they could get that off the ground, suddenly it's um, sold it off to a private buyer. That was in 2018, I think it was. And since then, which is three years ago, nothing has happened apart from, well, it's got more and more derelict. Apparently, people are saying that the whole road may may collapse. That's why they won't let people walk on that bit because it's dangerous. And I think what's happened is they just um, come and made it and just um, boarded it all up with metal boards. So that's now privately owned, going to Rackham that we're in, and eventually that'll have to be um, filled in the Rackham. But inside there was a glorious Victorian Edwardian um, concert hall, the West Cliff Hall. So I'll try and find pictures at the time when it was working. Bit sad isn't it now? But there you go. So this is the first, this is the last second walk through Ramsgate. This is the Westcliff. We didn't go very far down the Westcliff but I think you've got the idea and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did please like it down below, subscribe, press the notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I put out something like this rather than have to find it randomly and Comment, let me know what you think, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whatever. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. That's all, folks.